Um, so hopefully you already know um, that I'm here to talk to you about SVM PubSub. I think based on the fact that I recognize probably about half the audience, I'm guessing some of you do. Uh, so a little bit about myself before we get started. So uh, I'm a subversion committer. I've been involved with the subversion project for quite some time. I took a little bit of a break and came back in 2012 when I started working for Windisco to work on the subversion project um, full time. Uh, and along the way, I ended up getting involved with the SVM pub sub stuff. So, uh, so before we get into the, the more technical details, um, I want to talk about kind of the reasons why SVM PubSub exists. And that basically all comes down to how to respond to change. So I assume everybody knows what subversion is, but if you know nothing else about subversion, the only important, real important thing that you know for the purpose of this talk is that it's a version control system and you put changes into it and it tracks them. But once you've got, once you're putting changes into this, you're going to want to respond to those change in some, some, some automated way. So um, hopefully that's not too small to read, but um, ultimately you end up with a lot of different things that you want to drive off of changes to your subversion repository. Um, you typically want to go to, going to want to do some sort of notifications. Maybe it's an email every time somebody commits or an IRC post uh, or even Twitter. Uh, you may want to uh, drive uh, your changes into some sort of peer review system or do build and test automation or maybe you're putting your website into subversion and you want to deploy it automatically whenever somebody changes it. Uh, uh, maybe you've got an issue tracker that, that you, you want to set up so that when somebody mentions an issue, it automatically gets referenced in the issue tracker. Or you, maybe you want to allow people to close issues by, from their commit messages, things like that. Or lastly, maybe you want to do some mirroring with SVN sync or something like that. So there's two basic ways to go about doing that right now. There's ignoring SVM PubSub, which we'll get to in a second. There's hooks and pulling. And um, all a hook is is a really simple script that you run and that you put in, in a directory in your repository. And whenever somebody does something that triggers that script, the, the event for that script, it runs the script. It might be a script or it could be a, a C program that you wrote or whatever, and it gets past certain arguments that tell about what the change that happened. Um, polling, pretty straightforward. You go to the repository every so often, you say things like, hey, what's the current youngest revision in the repository? And if the revision has changed, then you go ask about all the revisions since the last time you got that. But there, these, these methods are not perfect or ideal for, for everybody. So there's good things about hooks and bad things about hooks. So hooks, first of all, the great, so the great things about them is, first of all, they're immediate. So as soon as something happens in the repository, the hook script runs and, and you get your notification about what's going on. They're accurate. Um, you're not gonna have to worry about possibly missing changes to unver unversioned information like uh, 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 revision properties like what we'll talk about in a little bit. And they scale pretty well. You can have as many hook scripts as you want. You might have to write wrapper scripts around them and whatnot, but you can, you can run a lot of them and you can run them in, a background, in the background so that the, the commit can, continues. Um, the bad thing about them is that since they live in the repository, the administrator of the repository, which might not be you, has to go and install them. So if you're an individual and you're not the admin and you want to react to some change in some subversion repository that you have access to, you've got to go get that admin to install a hook for you in order to do this. Um, the other problem is, is that the hooks all run on the same server that the subversion repository is being hosted on, which means your admin may not be particularly hip on the idea of installing your hook scripts or um, 
maybe you want to take and do something like, for instance, you want to update your website every time somebody commits to your, your repository that has your website. Uh, easy way to do that from a hook would be do something like SSH into the, into the website server and run you know, an up, SVN update command. Uh, the problem with that, of course, is that you probably don't want your subversion repository having access to your web server. Uh, so if you don't want to do that sort of thing, then you have to create your own communication mechanism to take and tell the web server, hey, this change happened, and you're basically reinventing the wheel for every, every time you want to do one of these things. Polling, the great thing about it is it's open. Basically, anybody can do this. Uh, if you can get to the repository and can talk to it and ask it questions, you can set your own polling up. Bad thing is, it's kind of slow. You don't want to, you don't want to take and pull the repository every second. Your, your subversion administrator will probably not be very happy with you. So you're going to have to probably take and say, oh, I'm going to do it every five minutes. So your, your notifications aren't going to be super fast. Uh, it's not particularly scaling because you, you have all these different polling clients out there constantly going and hitting the server asking. So if you're like the ASF and everybody's pulling your repository, that, that adds a lot of server load. And ultimately, revision properties are a problem. So um, revision properties are inversion, so anybody can change them at any time. You can write a hook script that says when a revision property gets changed, run this script. Uh, but if you want to pull uh, revision properties, your only choice is to go through and iterate every revision and look to see whether or not it's changed. And if you were to do that against, say, the ASF repo with 1.5 million revision, revisions, that would take a long time. So ultimately, what we really want is something that's open so anybody can connect to it and get notifications, something that they get notifications basically immediately, something that's accurate and that scales, and that they don't have to cross security boundaries. And we get most of that from SVM PubSub. So let's talk a little bit about the history of SVM PubSub. So SVM PubSub started out as an infrastructure project because back in August of 2009, uh, the Apache.org website got hacked. And infrastructure realized that they had no idea how to figure out what, if anything, was changed on the website because the process for updating the website was basically, you know, just put some files on this machine and then it gets rsynced over to the website servers. And so it was a real problem for them to validate uh, what changed. So almost immediately, uh, I think it was Paul started building SVM PubSub and SVN WC Sub to replace it. Uh, in February 2012, the project was moved out of just being part of infrastructures uh, code and into the subversion project so that subversion developers could help work on it and it could reach wider use. Uh, where I got involved in this was in September 2012, CIA died, and by CIA I do not mean the three-letter agency. I mean the IRC bot. Um, so on IRC there was a bot that would take and would post every time somebody committed to your, to your subversion repository. And how this worked was uh, there was a hook script that you installed and it notified the bot and there was a central bot that this one group of people ran that you know, knew when it got something from you know, the ASF repo in the subversion directory to go post in the SVN dev channel. And unfortunately, the people that were running it were making changes on the machine it was running on, weren't using version control and didn't have a backup and the machine's hard drive died, and along with it went the bot. And that was the end of the bot. So, of course, everybody goes, well, where's my IRC notifications? I want my, my notifications. Where'd, the, where'd they go? And so we had to come up with an alternate way to provide those notifications. And obviously, we could have just used the hook script and wrote a new bot, but a much better way was to use SVM PubSub, which was already deployed as infrastructure. Um, and when I started looking at this, SVM PubSub wasn't, SVM PubSub was primarily made just to drive SVN WC sub. So it didn't have all the information. We had to expand some of the information that it had. So let's look at the architecture. So it's actually pretty simple. 
you still have a hook script, except now the hook script communicates to the SVM pub subserver. So you have your subversion repository. It runs your, hooks, your post commit hook script. Your post commit hook script connects to the SVM pub subserver, sends it some JSON data, which describes the change that just happened. And then the SVM pub subserver has clients that connect to it. Uh, and those clients say, hey, I want to get notified about stuff. And when changes come in, um, the SVM pub subserver figures out which clients need to get that notification based on what they asked for and then it sends it back to them. And the clients keep open a persistent TCP connection to the pub subserver. So, um, so it's actually really quite simple. So the pub subserver is built on some you know, pretty well-known basic technologies. You've got, it, it communicates via HTTP, and basically has a REST interface, uses JSON for data format, and Python, using the twisted framework is how the server is written. So the REST API is pretty straightforward. You do a put to publish a notification to the SVM pub sub and a get to subscribe to notifications. So here's an example of the body that you would put to slash commits to send a notification. I actually pulled this off of one that somebody was doing like a week ago or so when I was filling this in. Uh, of this data, most of it's pretty straightforward, except for a handful of fields. Uh, the format field is just uh, a version number for the, for the format of the, of the data. Uh, the type is the type of version control system that, that you're using. In this case, it's essentially always gonna be SVN right now, but that might change. Uh, ID will be the revision number. So in this case, it was 904,460. Uh, I think this was to infrastructure's repo. And then um, the repository is the UID of the subversion repository. And within the changed uh, object, you've got basically a hash of the, the paths that changed. And then there's uh, the flags, which are basically just the, the two-digit two subversion what changed bits, which is the first one is the file content change state, and the second one is the, the property state. Um, of this, the only thing that the server cares about whatsoever is you have to have a format, you have to have a type, and you have to have an ID, and you have to have a repository. Everything else just gets passed through to the client. So other fields could be added, uh, or fields could be emitted. So on the client end, uh, all you have to do is do a get, against slash commits, and you can optionally specify the type. So like in the previous slide where, where it was said SVN, that would be the type, and you can specify the rep repository UID that you wanna pay attention to. So um, here's some examples of some uh, uh, URLs that you, or partial URLs, relative URLs that you would use. So just slash commits would get you everything that the pub sub server sees. Uh, slash commit slash SVN slash star or slash commit slash SVN would give you everything that had the type SVN. Um, and slash commit slash star slash, and the repository UID would give you everything that had that repository UID in it, even if, even if it didn't say type SVN. And then the last one has to say type SVN, have to say that UID. It's pretty basic filtering, um, but it lets you decide, I only care about, say, you know, in the ASF concept, I only care about, say, the infrastructure re repository or the ASF you know, big, massive repository. So within the contents of that response body, you're going to get back a stream of, of JSON records. And each one of those JSON records is going to be separated by a null byte. And the reason we use a null byte to separate them is because, first of all, you probably want to take and pass this to just a standard string JSON parser. And so you need separate individual JSON records for each time we send you something. And null bytes are not allowed in JSON without escaping. So it makes it really easy to just read until you see the null byte, pass it to your JSON parser, and, and continue along. And there's basically three different record types that you can get back out of SVM PubSub. 
So the first one is just the SVM pub sub, which is just basically a very simple hello message. Hey, you connected to me, I'm here, this is my version for the format that I'm gonna start sending you. Uh, the second one is commit, which is just basically the details of the commit, the stuff that we just saw, just resent to the, to the client. And then the other one is a still alive, which is basically, it just gives you a timestamp periodically so the client knows that the connection's working and also it, it keeps the TCP connection running. So uh, an example of some of these record types, very top one is that hello message. Like I said, is really, really simple. Uh, the second one is a commit message and basically it's just commit to say the type and then the same information that we saw in the previous slide that came from the server. It's just reset to the client and then it's still alive, it's just that timestamp. So it's really pretty simple. So putting SVM pub sub into use in practice. Um, there's basically four clients right now that are written that are included with, with SVM pub sub. There's SVN WC sub and all SVN WC sub does is when you set it up to subscribe to a working copy and a stream and a particular path on that stream in that repository and when it sees somebody update, change something that would, would be reflected in that working copy, it runs the update for you. So basically your working copy would just automatically update if you set this up. And um, as we'll talk about a little bit later, that's like how the ASF updates websites now. Uh, SVN tweet, basically it gets notifications, it sends something on Twitter. I honestly don't know how well this works. I've never actually tried it. I just know it's there. I think somebody wrote this as a toy. Um, it's pr I, part of the reason I've never tried it is because the SF repo would be rather, I, I think you'd probably run into problems with, with Twitter not being happy with how much stuff you're posting. Um, and also, I didn't really want to make a Twitter account just to play with it. Um, Urker Bridge, uh, so um, I mentioned earlier the whole CIA situation. Uh, Eric S. Raymond wrote a little IRC bot called Urker and all it does is you start it up and then you send it some JSON with the IRC server and the channel and the message and it connects to that server if it's not already connected, joins that channel if it's not already joined and then sends the message. And so all Urker Bridge does is it takes and it connects to an SVM pub sub server and listens for things that, that it wants to post to IRC and then sends it on to the formats it into the the proper formatting and sends it on to Urker to actually submit to IRC. Uh, and then there's the watcher, which really is nothing more than a very simple command line program that gives you kind of pretty output. Um, it's mostly just there for debugging, but um, all of these tools use the SVN's pub sub Python client library and uh, the watcher also does so, and it's a really simple implementation to see. So if you want to write something and you don't want to write your own uh, code to handle connecting and making sure you stay connected, maybe even you know connecting to multiple different streams, you don't want to deal with any of that stuff, you can use the client library that comes with SVM pub sub. And if you want a really simple, like five line example, watcher is what to look at. So SVM pub sub at Apache, so the top URL is the URL to the pub sub server for Apache. You can't just use svn.apache.org because depending on where you are, you might go to the EU SVN server and the EU SVN server doesn't have the pub sub server on it. So you gotta use Dash Master to get to the US one. Um, you'll note it's on port 2069. That's the standard port, port for pub sub. I have no idea why we picked that port number, but that's the port number. Uh, so, uh, there's the ASF bot, which is written by Daniel, uh, which is a little Lua bot that connects to PubSub. Hmm? It's Python? Really? All right, I take that back, it's Python. Uh, a little Python bot that connects to the PubSub server and uh, takes and posts in your channel. I assume you just ask you to add it to your channel. Yeah, so. Uh, then I have an, a version of the Erker bot running uh, it's sitting on pound commits in Freenode and 
It's also on the Subversion Dev channel, which we use as a backup when something happens to ASF bot, which doesn't happen all that often. Uh, then, as I kind of mentioned before, uh, all website deployments have to be done through SVNWC sub now. So if you're a project and you have a website at ASF, you're probably using this already, even if you don't really realize it. And the release archives, I think that's still optional to use it that way, but basically old releases go into the archives and uh, SVM PubSub somehow drives that. I'm not clear on how that works. I just know that it's involved somehow. Yeah. Okay, so installation. Um, so the, uh, the SVM pub sub, sub stuff comes in the subversion tarball under tools, server side, SVM pub sub. Um, the installation is not scripted, so install dash tools, which would install most of our other tools, doesn't install pub sub, but it's actually pretty easy. In fact, I'm gonna do it for you here while you watch. <laughs> um, there's init scripts for several different systems for SVM pub sub and SVN WC sub already written in the, uh, in the rc.d directory underneath that directory. So let's do a little demo. So let me switch this around to not to mirror my displays. Hopefully everybody can see that all right. So this is just a little uh, Ubuntu 1204 VM that I've got. Uh, very, very simple, you know, just basic VM setup. So basically nothing's installed. I did install subversion from the WANDISCO binaries and so it has the 188 version rather than whatever the heck Ubuntu ships, which is probably 1.6 still. And I did install the Python twisted uh, package from Ubuntu. But other than that, the only other thing I did is I put the tarball here so I didn't have to worry about having network access. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, extract the, what the heck? Hmm? Oh, J instead of Z. All right. So I'm going to go into the um, uh, directory, and you can see the SVM pub sub server is there alongside the other tools. So I'm just going to copy that whole pub sub folder to slash opt, which is where all the Debian-based stuff assumes you're going to put stuff. Oh, is it a little cut off? Here, let me. Um, let me fix that. Let's see if I can get it to. Oh. <laughs> very high tech. Uh, very high tech solution. All right, this will work. Okay, so all I did is, you know, did a copy of the SVM pub subfolder to slash opt, which is where all the init scripts and most of the stuff assumes you put stuff on DBN-based distros. I think it's user local for the, the RPM-based distros. Um, so I'm gonna go into init to D, and I'm gonna just link the DBN init script. And I'm gonna go ahead and add it in. And I'm going to take and make a directory for where the logs go. Otherwise the server won't start. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and reboot this so that my init script will start it up. All right, so you can see we now have a little twisted instance here running SVM PubSub. And um, I'm going to go ahead and use that watcher tool that I mentioned earlier. And I'm just going to connect. And you can see it connected, and it gave back the little hello message, because that's what the version one thing that means. And if I sat here for a little bit, it'll eventually send a, a ping message as the watcher prints out, to, which is the keep alive. Yeah, see, there you go. So it's obviously working. So now we need to create a little subversion repository and set up the hooks. So I'm just going to take and create a repo. And I'm going to go ahead and check it out into a directory here real quick. And I'm going to go into the hooks. And there's already a hook script already written for you. So I'm just going to take that hook script and I'm going to link it. But before I get too far, I got to fix some paths. Because my Python is not in local. And SVN look is not in whatever the heck this directory is. So now I'm going to set up to commit something. So I'm going to put something in a file here. And I'm going to add the file. And I'm going to start that watcher program. In the background. And then I'm going to check in my change. And you'll see kind of in the middle there, it got the commit message and you've got the JSON for the commit that I just made. So we've got SVM PubSub set up and we're getting messages and you see it just gave the little ping thing there. Um, and we're getting messages from it for our repository. So now let's um, set up another user here. And let's have this user check out that working copy. Now, I'm cheating here and using files once. You could use a server and all this stuff works just fine with, with HTTP or SVN URLs or whatnot. I'm just not setting up a server in this case. So they've got a working copy here now. So I'm going to take and make a, and let me guess, now we're cut off the other end. There we go. I got it. So I'm just going to make a directory for the logs for SCMWC sub to go into, because again, it doesn't start without it. And we're going to take and link the the init script for Debian in here again. And enable it. And SVN PubSub needed no setup because it's really dumb. You just post stuff to it and it sends it back. But SVN WC sub, we gotta, we got to configure it. So I'm going to copy the, conf, uh, the example config file. Oops. To here. Yeah. 
Uh, no, sorry. So I gotta fix some paths and the streams. Oh, yeah. All right, thank you. So the I gotta fix, fix I fixed the path to the SVN binary, and um, I need to change the the path here to host name to the streams, which is where the SVN pub sub server is, and I'm gonna go ahead and change the name of this variable. So this is using Python's config parsers. So you can create your own variables and then you re reuse them later. So I'm going to go ahead and give the path to our repository. And our user here is svnwc. And the working copy is svnwc wc. And that's gonna be the path to the repo and we're gonna get everything in there, and we don't need that. So all I did here is basically change some settings and, and uh, point it at the right working copy and the right repo, basically. So um, pretty basic stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And now we're gonna reboot again. Technically, we don't have to reboot, but I'm just doing it to demonstrate that the, the net script works. However, there is one little gotcha right now that I noticed while doing setting up this demo. Apparently when SVNWC sub starts in daemon mode right now, it, uh, it doesn't have permission to write to its, uh, its PID file, which is why you saw that little exception blank by, but we're gonna ignore that for right now because it's not important <laughs> to, for the purposes of this demo because it does still work. Um, so if I take and I look at the file I made a little bit ago, it says something in it, and this is in the, the other user's working copy. It's got something, and if I go into my working copy and cat the file, I've got something too. So let's uh, put something better in the file. And check it in. Of course, my working copy says something better because I just put it in there. And the other user's working copy was updated just magically, just happened. And if you look, they're updated to revision too, just like that. So it's pretty simple stuff to use and pretty powerful. So well, let's go back to the presentation. And Where did it, oh, there we go. So, future, where can we go with this? What, what's to do? So, revision property changes. The version that's in subversion 1.8 does not have any support for revision property changes. It only supports regular commits. And as we talked about earlier, polling does not work for revision property changes. It's not helpful. Uh, Franco here added uh, support for it in the current trunk, which should be in 190, and slash metadata will have uh, revision property changes. It does have to add another hook, the post rev prop change hook. And unfortunately, if you're offline when revision property changes, the only way to find out what you missed is to go through all the revisions. There's no good way to catch up. So some future ideas for where we could go with this. Um, obviously, uh, locking notification. Uh, Subversion supports locks. ASF doesn't really use it, but if you're using locks, it might be really nice to find out that you know, Bob is working on file bar, because you know, he locked it. Um, might be nice to have a non-twisted server implementation. I have no idea how well twisted will, will scale. I, I mean, the SF is a big repository, but there's still very few users. I mean, I would guess there's probably like maybe five clients or something like that connected to the SVN PubSub right now. Um, 
there's really no access control, and we should fix that. Uh, the SVM pub sub server will submit, only allows stuff to be submitted from local host right now, so it assumes it's running on the same server as the uh, subversion repository, because the repository's uh, putting to it uh, from the commit, from the hook scripts. Uh, it'd be nice to have some way to say only these machines or with this user ID you can put, something like that, so it doesn't have to run on the same machine. On top of that, uh, it'd also be really nice to be able to say these users that are connecting in to get notifications can only know about these paths. So if you need to do path-based authorization right now, the only option is don't publish it to the pub sub server. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so one option, there's, the next two things are kind of almost mutually exclusive options. Uh, one option is to try to take and start building some of this sort of stuff into the actual subversion servers themselves. Um, right now, PubSub knows nothing about the repository. It just knows you're sending it data. It doesn't know where the repository is. Can't go look into it. So we have no way of fixing the problem of like um, uh, revision property changes. What did I miss? There's no way for it to go look into the repository for you, figure things out, um, or I last connected and I know about this revision, tell me about what I missed. There's no way for it to do that right now. Uh, it might be nice to build it into just the subversion servers. One of the advantages of doing that would be um, we could ultimately get to the point where, um, where this, this is just something every subversion server is presumed to have. Um, I mean, maybe you could turn it off, but most people would probably have it on. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is SVNWC sub does not deal with externals, and part of the reason why it doesn't deal with externals is because it has no idea where to look, where to get notifications for the externals, which might not be from the same repository or whatnot. So that might help with that too. Um, an alternative idea is something that we've kind of called VC subpub, which sort of there's been some work towards, um, basically making it completely not subversion specific. Um, I actually did a fair amount of work towards that uh, leading up to 1.8. That's why the server, for instance, doesn't care about anything other than those four fields. And you'll note it's, not, it's the ID field, it's not revision number field. Um, so I tried to make things very generic um, so they could be used for something else. In fact, there is a git pub sub, which is completely different. Well, same idea, just a little different. Um, but ultimate idea here would be to roll all of this stuff into one thing and just have one server. Um, documentation, kind of weak on that. <laughs> the formats aren't really documented um, and whatnot. Granted, it's not particularly difficult to figure out, but it would be nice to have some more documentation. And obviously, it'd be nice if we could just say, install SVM pub sub and it would put stuff in the right place and would work. Um, so that's basically the presentation. Um, there's some links here for you. Uh, the first one is to the trunk subversion repository. Um, probably if I was taking and installing SVM pub sub, I would probably just check this out instead of taking it out of a tarball. But the advantage of doing it the way I did it is I didn't need any network access. Um, there's the get pub sub, which is also at, at the ASF. Um, and then there's a link to the Urker bot that, that um, ESR wrote. Um, and that's, that's basically all I have. Anybody have any questions? Thoughts? Yes. I think from a technology perspective, this could be made to be scaled very easily to a lot of users. I think implementation-wise, I'm not sure Twisted could handle 
every committer deciding to have a PubSub client. I don't know how it's running right now. I think it depends on how you start Twisted. Because there's different, there, I know there's an event model like what you were talking about, and I'm, it probably can handle a ton of them. But, and different versions of Twisted and different platforms have different support for different, I think, I think Twisted calls them reactors. So I, I'm not sure to what degree all that scales and how well it scales. So. Yeah. If you really needed to, you could even load balance it and just have your hook scrub commit to multiple pub subs and put a load balancer in front of it and nobody has to know that there's more than one. I, I don't I think it would be a long time before anybody would get to that point. Are you considering to expand and make sure that the NPM update I have to run afterwards was also who use this information? If I if I take a look at this for instance, this is we have a lot of bytes, so when I run SVN off on the top level there, that that takes some time. Yeah. But if I could pass the information and say is we involved, the client knows exactly this file that has changed. If I could pass that somehow automatically into SVN update, it would be less load on the server and less load on my, my local client. Well, ultimately how update works is update takes and generates a report of what you have and then tells the server what you have and where you and what you want, what version you want to be at, and then the server generates the you know, the operations to take to bring you to the version you asked for. So the problem would be that's only valid, what you're suggesting, if your working copy is always at the exact previous version. Because what PubSub is publishing for you is, is what changed from exactly the previous version. You're, if your working copy's five versions back, the deltas are not the same necessarily. And on top of that, if you've committed something, you probably have a mixed working copy, at which point in time it's much more complicated. So I, I don't think that's something that's realistic. I mean, not, not for a working copy that somebody's using as an individual. I mean, maybe if you're using it as a, as a working copy for like deploying websites, and you're always assured that it's always gonna be at the previous version, maybe that would be useful, but at the same point in time, I don't think most of those working copies are big enough that that's a problem, so. Right. Yeah. Of the, of yeah. The so, you reminded me of a couple of things I kind of forgot to mention. You know, what, one of the one of the nice ideas would be to take and get lots of different pieces of servers or different pieces of software that need to plug into a version control system to take and just know about this, because right now, like for instance, like these build automation servers, I think they all pull. They all take and connect in and ask for what the youngest revision is every so often, which on one hand it's slow. Adds a bunch of load to the servers, but also it means you know that they they have to do this for everything. It's kind of annoying, so it would be nice to do that. And you know, you mentioned GitHub. It would be really nice if like a lot of these forges or whatnot would implement something. Everybody would implement this, and then you know, like we like we're saying with the build servers, those guys could just take and implement this one protocol, know how to talk to it. Anybody could set it up and work you know and run this. They plug into it and it just works. You know, then then the only thing they have to know is how to you know check out the data from the different version control systems, but they don't have to write separate pullers for each and every one. But. Any 
Anything else? Oh, good. How realistic is, is uh, RA Kit? Uh, it's perfectly functional if you want to read. If you want to write, it's terribly difficult and that's not dumb. Yeah, well, there were comments in there like, oh, uh, we, we need a commit editor, but that's all right, we'll do that in like a couple days. <laughs> like, it's no big deal. <laughs> It's no big deal. We'll write a commit editor. Like, like it's a little like five minute project. It's not. It's it would be really hard to do. You'd have to also do translations with end of line to how get handles end of line translations. Um, you'd have to tra you'd have to convert ignores, and there's just a ton of stuff that you'd have to to deal with. RA get might actually work now for that purpose. It but might be good enough. Back. Oh, but the CMS commits back too. Yeah, that well, all right. I was thinking it only read, but yeah, you're right. I mean, for, for PubSub purposes, it, it could still there still might be problems there. Just for PubSub, I mean, I think that would be a problem. So, yeah, unfortunately, the, the right bits are non, non, non trivial. That's the word I was looking for. Well, thanks for coming. <laughs>